Look at this super dodgy character. We better pixelate his face before we use it on tonight's news. I'm sorry, random guy I found on unsplash.com. But, like I said, let's pixelate this guy's face. And I'm also thinking I don't want to pixelate the whole image, just his face. Okay, so we have a JPEG just here. I have my layers panel open, and we have a single background layer just here. So let's start by duplicating this layer. Got the background selected, press Command or Control J. And I'm going to double click on layer one and rename this pixelated. Okay. I've selected my pixelated layer just here. Filter, pixelate, mosaic. Okay, this opens up the mosaic dialog box just here. I can dial in any cell size I like, choose OK, and that's all well and good, but here's the problem. We have permanently burnt that effect into this layer. If I want to tweak it slightly in the future, I can't. So let's undo that. What I'm going to do is right mouse click on this layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now I'm not going to take a deep dive into Smart Objects, guys. Just appreciate that what we've done is we've taken the pixel information from this layer and put it inside of a Smart Object, which protects those pixels. We could now free transform that layer. We could throw a whole bunch of filters at this layer and those original pixels are unharmed, which is fantastic for what we're about to do next, which is go straight back to filter, pixelate, mosaic. Now I'm just going to keep the cell size number the same and choose OK, but check out our layers panel just now. This entry for smart filters has turned up and we can see mosaic just down here. The eyeball next to it, I can turn that off and I can turn it back on with ease. We could save this Photoshop file and reopen it tomorrow and this would remain intact within the layers panel. So this is totally dynamic moving forward. And the even greater thing about this is I can double click on the word mosaic and we are given the same dialog box we saw a few moments ago. So I can tweak that cell size, choose OK and fantastic. Now. We've managed to pixelate this, but remember I said earlier I'd like to just pixelate the face, not the rest of the image. So I've got the pixelated layer selected just here. I'm going to come down to this tool just here, which is the ellipse tool. Uh, normally you'll see the rectangle tool just down here. Click and hold on it, and you can find the ellipse tool just there. Now you've got the options bar running across the top just here. Make sure path is selected. And make sure where you have these two overlapping squares, click and hold on that and confirm you have combined shapes selected. I'm not going to take a deep dive into all of the vector settings here inside of Photoshop. Just set those couple of settings and you should be good to go. Now, with the pixelated layer selected, and I've got the ellipse tool with path and combined shapes chosen, I'm going to draw an oval roughly over his face. Don't worry about getting it perfect, guys, because what I'm about to show you is also something which we can dynamically change at a later stage. So I've drawn the path. We've got the pixelated layer selected. Let's go up to Layer, Vector Mask, Current Path. And what it's done is it's created a vector path, a vector mask, excuse me, from the path that we drew on our pixelated layer. Now, of course, that doesn't line up particularly well, so let's adjust that. Now, you want to be careful, guys, what you have targeted just here. If I click on the thumbnail for the pixelated layer, excuse me, I'll just click away and click on that thumbnail. If I go up to Edit, Free Transform, keyboard shortcut is Command or Control T, just choose OK. If I was to resize this, you can see I'm actually resizing the layer, whereas it's the actual mask, the vector mask that we want to resize. So I'm just going to press escape to jump out of there. As opposed to clicking on the layer thumbnail, I'm going to click on the thumbnail for the layer mask. Now, if I press Command or Control T to go into free transform, you can see I am just editing that path which defines the vector mask. Very nice and then just press enter or return to commit that. There's one last thing I would like to do. 
I would like to feather this a little bit. Currently, it's a very hard um, boundary around that pixelation. So I selected the vector mask. Have a look over in the properties panel. There is a feather option just here. So I can dial in whatever number I like. And it's basically just a case of dragging this around until you find a number that you like. And in this case, something close to 200 pixels is looking really good. I'm just going to click in a blank part of the layers panel to get a better look at this. And generally, I'm thinking this is pretty good. However, you can see the uh, detail in this eye is starting to creep back in. Excellent. Well, we've got a few options how we could go about fixing this. One would be to actually, again, click on the thumbnail for the vector mask just here. Command or Control T. And I could stretch this out just a little bit. Again, enter or return to commit that. And the other option is maybe to adjust the feathering. So maybe the feathering is a little bit too large. So again, vector mask is targeted. And maybe I'll just bring this feathering down a little bit. Let's see. So in this case, I've got something closer to 100. And that's looking pretty good. So of course, guys, you could tweak this to your heart's content. But I am pretty happy at this point. And I might wrap things up just there. So I hope that gives you some good ideas on how you can pixelate a face or indeed pixelate anything here inside of Photoshop. Catch you later.